this video goes along with the handout, The Cost of a College Education. I'm not going to show you, um, well, I'll show you right now. I'm not going to show you the instructions here. You should print those off. Um, that's a PDF file. Go ahead and print that off um, and print your answer sheet off. Um, and then I'm going to help you work through this. If you have any questions, um, let me uh, know after you get this done. Um, once again, as all the handouts, I would try um, to read the directions, work through it as best you can, and then when you get to a point where you need some uh, help, then I would turn the, uh, the video back on. Um, hopefully by now you've watched the videos and you've taken some notes and you understand the difference between an explicit cost and an implicit cost. Um, sometimes referred to as accounting costs and economic costs. An accountant is only going to look at the dollar amount. An economist is always going to look at um, the opportunity cost. So explicit just means these are expenses or costs that you can write down and put a dollar amount on. But an economist would tell you that there are so many other costs, so many opportunities that you give up when you make a choice. So when we're looking at the cost of college, um, we have to not only look at the economic, or excuse me, the accounting cost or the dollar amount, which is known as the explicit cost, but we also have to look at the total um, cost, so we have to add in the implicit cost, also known as the opportunity cost um, and the economic cost. So you're going to look at um, that handout that you've printed off or pulled up on your screen, and there are A through H in terms of different explicit costs. These are dollar amounts that are going to be attached to you attending college. Um, so A talks about tuition. So that is a dollar amount, and it's right here, and we're going to put that under an explicit cost. Um, B, textbooks and school supplies. So there is a place for that, and that is an explicit cost. An accountant would add that to that. Um, C, faculty and administrative salaries and other university expenses budgeted um, by the Board of Trustee from funds provided by, um, that should be state legislature. Um, we're not going to look at that right now. Um, we're going to look for the, uh, the uh, scholarship on there. And so D is contributions to the university from alumni, private foundations. Um, e, you can work. That's not a scholarship, F. That's where we get to the scholarship. You've received a $500 a year scholarship from the Board of Trustees. So we're going to put our $500 scholarship in there. And subtotal, what I need for you to do, if your tuition is $2,000 and you got a $500 um, scholarship, then your tuition is going to be um, $1,500. We're going to subtract that from that. <clears throat> Dorm fees. Um, if we look at that, it says dorm fees are $340 a month. We're going to be there for nine months. So we have to take that $340, and we have to multiply that times nine to get our total dorm fees, which is going to be $3,060. And so at this point, we can add these up. So we've already done the math here. We went 2000 subtracted the scholarship, got $1,500 for tuition, $450 for textbooks, 3060 um, for our dorm fees. So if you were to ask an accountant what your cost of college would be, it would be 5010 But if you ask an economist, they're going to say, you know, you've only gotten a part of the picture because you haven't calculated the implicit, those costs that we don't really see going in and out of our pockets because it's not money, but it's still things that we either have to give up um, or can't do because of a decision that we've made. So, um, you can normally work, this is letter E, and earn $800 a month when you aren't going to school. So that's once again for eight months. So if you can earn $800 a month for nine months, you are giving up the opportunity. You cannot make that $7,200. So that's a loss of income. So when you start looking at, at that over four years, those students who go to school for four years to college and do not work some sort of job, they are giving up the opportunity to work for those four years. Now obviously there is an incentive, there's that term incentive, um, to go to four years of college because um, statistics show that people who earn a college diploma throughout their lives are definitely going to make more money than a student who just has a high school diploma. And it's not even a four-year degree. It's any sort of 
um, schooling above and beyond high school. So that's a trade school, that's a two-year degree, that's a four-year degree. So any advanced degrees that you can get is definitely going to improve the amount of money that you make over the course of your life. So that's why we do it. There is an incentive to do that. The other thing that you're giving up during this nine months when you're living in a, in a dorm is the opportunity to live at home. So this isn't a cost to you, but this is actually a savings. And so um, if you lived at home, um, you uh, giving up that opportunity. So we have to back that out because it's not going to, um, let me read that here. Uh, living at home, da, 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 da. Um, it costs 150 a month to live at home. So you're not living at home, so you're not incurring that $150 a month cost. So that's where that 1350 comes in. So we're going to take that 7200 and we're going to subtract the 1350 So your implicit cost, the opportunity cost, of going to college and we can put a number on that because you're not working you're not making that money and you know how much it would so a total accounting cost that's your explicit cost we're just going to bring this number down an accountant would say it's going to cost you five thousand ten dollars to go to college but if you ask an economist they're going to take the explicit cost and the implicit cost and they're going to add those two together for a total of eight thousand uh, or excuse me, 10860 um, I'm going to move this up just a little bit. When you attend college, you are not the only one who incurs costs from that, especially if you go um, to a state school. Most of, um, your two, or not, most of your expenses are covered by taxpayer dollars. That's why when you go to IU or Purdue, um, uh, Ball State, Indiana State University, those are all public colleges, Ivy Tech, that are supported um, by tax dollars. Now, if you start going to your private colleges, they do not get tax dollars from the state. And so that's why Indiana Westland and Manchester and Notre Dame, all of those colleges cost so much more than your state schools because they are not supported by taxpayer dollars from the state of Indiana. Um, and that's also why a student coming from another state has to pay out-of-state tuition as opposed to a student who lives in state. They don't pay taxes within the state of Indiana, Indiana state taxes. Um, so when we look at this, the state legislature, um, if you look at letter C, um, we have to pay faculty administrative salaries, expenses, and those sorts of things. So the expenses that are paid through state, uh, through tax dollars um, for this example is 2200 Scholarships from the state, um, that is $500, that's the F, um, somebody has to pay for that. Um, and so you're getting it, subtracting it, but that money has to come from somewhere. So you're getting that scholarship, so we're, we're taking it out of your expenses, but somebody has to pay that. So the total expenses down here to the taxpayer is $2,700. And so then finally, um, when we look at the total costs, we're going to take the cost that you have to pay up here, 10860 the taxpayers are contributing, and then um, $250 is contributed, if you look at letter C, from the alumni. So $250 that the alumni contribute. So when we start looking at the total cost of you going to college, it's 13810 So where an accountant would say, and you ask an accountant how much is it going to go, cost me to go to college, they'd say 5010 If you ask an economist, they're going to take that 5010 they're going to add the opportunity cost, they're going to add the cost that um, taxpayers contribute, and then other people outside of the taxpayers, the alumni, and, and uh, people like that. Um, so that is part one. Part two tells you... Um, that there's going to be a few changes. Um, so we're going to increase your tuition, um, the budget is changing a little bit, and then scholarship is changing. So um, basically uh, when we do that, oh, let me move my paper here. <clears throat> when we do that, we're going to make uh, tuition is now according to that $2,250. So $2,250. Um, your scholarship now is uh, 350 because it fell by $150. That's number three. 
Um, so now your subtotal for this is $1,900. Your textbooks are still $450. Um, your room and board is still $3,060. So your explicit, your out-of-pocket costs, $5,410. Um, we're still losing the opportunity of working. We're still losing the opportunity costs of living at home. And so our explicit, or excuse me, implicit or opportunity costs total $58.50. So our accounting costs are still going to be our explicit costs. The accountant would say out of pocket, $5,410. The economist is going to say it's that $5,410 plus the opportunities that you are giving up. So $11,260 to you. That's when we increase your tuition and decrease the scholarship. And what's going to happen down here? Um, is the salaries and, and the budget for the uh, faculty and things like that has also changed. And so that's now decreased to 1950. The scholarship instead of 500 is now 350. So now we've shifted more of the responsibility to you um, and less to the taxpayer down to 2300. So your total cost, 11. I'm getting that number here, 11260 Taxpayers is 23 The alumni is still contributed the $250, so our total cost to society is 13810 And if you notice and look back at the other handout, those two are the same. The only thing that we've done is shifted um, less of the burden from the taxpayer on to the individual. And these things could absolutely happen depending on who was elected and who's in office. Um, the policies and how uh, education is going to be funded. So the last page, uh, how did the policy um, changes affect the students? Your amount that you had to pay out of pocket increased. The taxpayers uh, oops, decreased. When we look at the society, uh, the two are the same. So the amount that is paid when you calculate all the expenses are exactly the same. It's just now we have shifted the burden from uh, taxpayers on to students.